All right, we are live. Uh, Houston just survived a, a horrific collapse, up 12 with two minutes left. Uh, the game gets sent to overtime. Texas A&M uh, made it very, very interesting. Riggs is here joining me. Blutman is on the couch uh, looking at God knows what. What are you looking at on your phone? An uh, uh, ESPN app. Okay, just making sure. Just ma- I'm just making sure you're still locked you know, in. I was going to say no words, and you already made me say I know, words. but if you're going to be in the room, I want you to be locked in. I just want to make sure you're locked in. Are you locked in? Okay. Uh, Houston was up 12. Um, This felt like a stereotypical Houston game uh, where they just kept – we're going to keep A&M at arm's length the whole time. And to a casual fan, you keep tuning in, you're like, oh, they're they're within seven. Maybe they can make a game of this. But, like, if you watch a lot of Houston basketball, you're like – They'll win by 12. Yeah, they're not going to make a game of this because they'll just just keep them at bay. And yet they made a game of it. We got a little bit of madness. Thank God because – Mark, am I safe to say that saved the day? It kind of uh, w- the first game and the last. Well, yeah, you're count- well, San Diego yeah, State S- Yale. San Diego State ball. Yale's like a 28 point game right now. We're gonna go ahead and assume that that one is. Yeah, we're is we're ready to call it. Yeah, we'll call that one. But other than that, like it was just, I thought I think me and you talked about it either last night or this my time's fake in March. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about it at some point. It felt like today was the day that we were building for where we got the moments, we got right. the mayhem. There were a lot of uh, double-digit seeds you could talk yourself into. Colorado Marquette was actually a great game. That was Colorado awesome. Colorado was really good. But uh, James Madison Duke felt like a ga- like could be a good game. JMU is, you know, we saw what they did shit. You saw what yeah. they did to Wisconsin, leading wire to wire. Um, Yale, I mean, not that I expected much out of Yale, but, you know, San Diego State. The Mountain West. I, I did not expect San Diego State to, to shoot the piss out of the ball. That's not exactly San Diego State basketball, so I thought there might be something there. Uh, Grand Canyon, Bama, that was sort of interesting there for a second, but Grand Canyon just kept shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, it felt like – I mean, we kept saying it, like, if they take the lead, Alabama will panic. Little did we know when Grand Canyon <laughs> takes the lead, they panic. They're going to panic yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it really was like a weird like Colorado Marquette was a great game. Uh, we had Utah a, a State few, was fun for four minutes. Utah State was fun for four minutes, and then Purdue stepped on their throat. Um, Duke James Madison was fun for exactly like twenty seconds. The tip I think. Was cool. Yeah, the tip was cool. Yeah, James the, Madison was out there. I think PFT clapping it up as the tip was happening. Three two. That was cool. It was three two, and that was yeah. that was the highlight because McCain hit a three like immediately for yep. Duke, and then James yeah, scored. James scored. And it was like okay, the boys are settled in. McCain hits eight threes for Duke, and uh, and and they look unbelievable. Um, and then what, like Clemson, Baylor, like ba- the Clemson was was up on ba- Baylor. Is is Clemson good? No, I, th- I think they they have to be now. I or refuse no? to acknowledge it because ACC basketball fans are doing what SEC football fans are now doing. Of we got four teams in the Sweet Sixteen. We are the best conference yeah. in America, and it's the same as like. Vanderbilt fans in bowl season being like, well, we got eight wins and the yeah. national champ. I will best. say, I, I I don't disagree with what you're saying, and I do believe, um, I, I, and I've been consistent about this forever, when the Big Ten does well in the tournament, when the Big Ten stinks, check the tapes. I, I am pretty consistent with this, that I do not believe that conferences win NCAA tournament games. I believe oh, that they that, get team, the money. that teams do. But the conferences get the money. But the conferences get the money. Having said that, if if you are an ACC person and you are someone who wants to have a little bit of conference pride at a time where the SEC and the Big Ten are running everything and you kind of feel like the redheaded stepchild and the Big 12 is also like building something, the ACC, the death of the ACC feels a little imminent, but also not really, but also they maybe. They got SMU. Yeah, SMU's <laughs> coming and Cal and Stanford are coming and you're like, is this conference? dying or not we're not really sure if you get four teams in and one of them is NC State on a Cinderella run one of them is Clemson who this is is not good but not. also is good <laughs> uh I would probably be a little proud their tournament starts now though because yeah they, they, Mountain West doesn't count in March <laughs> and Baylor now has a dynasty of losing in the round of 32 it's three in a row that's three in a row for Baylor in the round of they won a title and now they just lose in the round of 32 and Virginia won a title, and they haven't won a game since. That's interesting. Is it bad to win a title? Is winning a title is overrated. That's what. That's does what winning learning. a title ruin a program? Is that the worst thing that can happen? Is winning a title? I, I, I have nothing against Clemson. Um, and Clemson fans watching this are losing their minds. Like, what do you mean we're bad? We're in the Sweet Sixteen. This is awesome. Everything's rolling. I just want to for for the neutral fan watching. I want to give you a breakdown of what Clemson's season has been. They went to Tuscaloosa, uh, and beat Alabama in November. 
um, 85 to 77. That was like the first big win of the season when when they started to feel like there might be something special here. They start nine and zero. They beat South Carolina. Yep. They beat TCU. They beat Pittsburgh, who didn't make the tournament, but they won at Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh is a good team. They were like a bubble. Pittsburgh team. should win at home. Yeah. Um. So Clemson starts nine and zero with some impressive wins. Then they lose at Memphis. Uh, who ended up not being great, but I think at the time, like Memphis that wasn't was the, top ten. Yeah, that time, wasn't probably, like a, yeah. a huge loss. Uh, they 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 lost at Miami. Um, they they lost to Georgia Tech in double overtime at home. <laughs> they lost to Virginia, who did make the tournament, but Virginia stinks. Uh, and then they ended their season in the four games they played heading into the NCAA tournament. Uh, Clemson lost to Notre Dame, who was very bad. They beat Syracuse at home. That that's a win. That that's- counts. They lost to Wake Forest. And then they lost by 21 to Boston College in the ACC tournament. And that was the last four games we saw from Clemson heading into the NCAA tournament. And then now they, they, they beat the brakes off New Mexico. As an then, underdog. As an underdog. As a six-seed underdog. And then they, they, they kind of – I mean, Baylor came back-ish, but Baylor couldn't hit free throws down the stretch. Yeah. And uh, Clemson was a better team for 40 minutes. And you're like, is this team – I don't know. They, they played Duke really well. They should have won at Duke. Yep, that, um, they did beat North Carolina uh, in Chapel Hill. So it's like maybe they, they they their highs are very high. The lows are very low. I have no idea how good this Clemson team right. is. Right, and that's why I have a problem with Clemson. I don't want to watch you anymore. Yeah. And it's nothing against P.J. Hall or Joe Girard or anyone. I'm just sick of trying to figure Clemson out. Yeah. Because they, they could win the title. And I'd still be like, "Are we sure?" Yeah, like, did I, that I, actually happen? I I agree with you. They're not going to win. Make them play the NIT. If they, it should be a rule. If they win the title. They have to play the NIT champion. Why is it? Yeah, <laughs> for the for the actual yes. championship. Why does it feel like NC State? Uh, Clemson was a better team throughout the duration of the season. Um, but NC State feels like a, a more viable ACC team. They feel like a more excitable ACC. I guess it's because they're more of the underdog. But like. I don't. I don't feel that way about NC State. If NC State keeps winning, I I think it's good. I think it's fun. It's two Clemson. Letters. Clemson. I'm like, oh my god. Like they're up. They're down. They're with NC State. It's it's two guys with two letters. DJ. Yeah, that's what. Horn it is. and yeah. Burns. Like yeah. you have America's sweetheart and Burns. And right. You have Horn who can go off for forty. Yeah. In an entertaining fashion. Clemson is playing through PJ Hall. Ian, what Shefferin? Shefferin, yeah. Uh, Joe Girard. Joe Girard just launches threes when he wants to. And, and also, NC State won five games in five days to make the tournament, and then now they've won twice. Right. And it's like if it's there's like something special brewing. Where again, Clemson just and like they're running their through way a buzzer the beater to force overtime against yeah. Boston College. But shout out to Clemson. Shout out to the ACC. I mean, surviving advance yeah. is the name of the it's game. All that matters. And and they have looked for what it's worth. They have looked really good in the tournament. So like maybe this is the real Clemson. But uh, it, it is funny because now we take a deep breath, we do a reset, um, and. You know, the, the part of me is like, man, Clemson has has proven it against two good teams. They were they were underdogs in the first round. They were they were underdogs tonight, um, and they win both games pretty easily. Uh, maybe they can hang with Arizona. Maybe this is you know maybe we're counting out Clemson oh. too much. The other part of me is like, they're gonna lose by twenty five, and like yeah, Arizona know. in the West. Yeah, like, that's out in that's in L A. L A. Yeah. yeah, that'll be in L A. Yeah, it's gonna be ninety five percent Arizona <laughs> fans. Yeah, I, it's just I don't know like. I it, to your point, if you if, when looking at the Sweet Sixteen teams, Clemson feels like the outlier as opposed to NC State. Yeah, and that's weird to me. And I think that's uh, yeah, and maybe it's the bracket too, right? Because NC State had Texas Tech, who fine, typical six seed, and then the right. fourteen seed. So there, it's like, oh, we saw NC State as a favorite yeah. already. They're in. Yeah, that's true. I, but I don't know, like, yeah, the Clemson Baylor game I think was the most shocking one today. I th- I would agree with that. Baylor, I, I haven't trusted Baylor's defense for most of the season, and I I never took Baylor seriously as a national title threat. But, uh, yeah, I, I was surprised that that it ended this way, and I was surprised that that their offense was was so bad today, and I was uh, surprised that the free throws. Um, I don't know what kind of free throw shooter Jacoby Walter. I think he's like seventy eight percent. Yeah, he's like not too bad, and he missed two in a yeah, big he spot. Nick, he went full Nick Anderson. It was a bad day for freshmen in big moments. Uh, uh, Cody Williams also for Colorado. have it. That was a great game. But to, the, the Cody Williams three with like a minute left, I think Colorado was down one, and he gets a wide open three on the wing and bricked it, um, which, you know, I don't necessarily think is a choke. 
But no, it, it, it was just job. like I don't, I don't think it was like, wide open. But it was just like ah, that, like if I'm Tad Boyle, that keeps me up tonight. Where I'm like, I yeah. that that's the kind of shot where when coaches say we just have to make shots, and then like that's the one. It, it sounds like very stupid, and you you hear that, and you're like, okay, you have to make shots. So that's that's how basketball works. Of course, you have to make shots. Right. It's plays like that that they're. It's talking not about. like as much as people say like Gordon Hayward the in 2010 that you know that'll keep everybody up. What if uh, you know half of inch this way. That's a miracle. Yeah, it was a miracle to even get that close. In the Cody Williams yeah. is a shot that a freshman basketball player in high school practices a yeah. hundred times a week. Yeah. It's not like, a, oh, God, what the hell do I do with this all of a And it's your, 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 your guy who uh, – you know, might be a top five pick, and and he got wide open, man. That was that was brutal for Colorado. That was a fun game, though. I think I think we had two really really good games, both in the sense yeah. that they were close and it was high level basketball. Uh, I actually think Marquette, Colorado, even though it didn't go to overtime and didn't have the uh, the theatrics and drama of, that Houston and, and Texas A and M had, I felt like that was the best game of the day. The first one, it was the cleanest played. Yeah, it, it was like very few fouls. Even I, I think the I think uh, the guy Bonner and it was it was Harlan Bonner and, and S- SVG because SVG, SVG was like losing his mind. He was losing his mind. I think they pointed out towards the end of the game that uh, there were so few fouls called yeah. in the game that they had to. When SVG to was foul. like, I don't know if they're gonna even gonna. He's like, they might run out of yeah, time to get time. to the foul, which is it's not something we're accustomed to seeing in college Speaking basketball. Upset. I can't believe how much I love Stan Van Gundy on college basketball. He's so good. It's he's so good because he he just doesn't. There, he he doesn't need the job, so he's just kind of like saying whatever the fuck he wants. He's kind of like a fan. Yeah, he's, he's just, just like, like this is what I see. So many so many commentators in college basketball see a horrendous call, and they're just like, I don't I don't know about that. It's a Gene, tough what break. Do you think? Gene, a, what do you Gene, think? What do you think? I don't know if I love that one. Stan Van Gundy's like horrible call, yeah. horrible. <laughs> He'll even do it about like coaches and players. Yeah. He's just like, what are they doing? <laughs> this guy stinks, and it's yeah. like. Well, that that guy's uh, Tyler Kolick. Yeah, you got to get him out of here. Get him out of here. What are the Colorado keeps letting Kolick go left? What are they doing? What are they? Uh, and it sounds a little jarring, maybe, but especially a, next to Dan Bonner, yeah, yeah, except who's the, just the, yeah. the prototypical. But that's how that's how coaches talk to players. So like, yeah. I don't. I mean, that's how guys are. That's I, how it should be. As long as you're not an asshole, but like if you call it as you see it if you call it as you see it and Tyler Kolick's going left and everybody knows that he wants to get to his left hand he's he's very left hand dominant and you you're doing nothing to keep him from going left I have I have no problem in fact the opposite I enjoy the commentary of Stan Van Gundy like losing his mind (laughs) I love it can we like we need him to advance in this commentator I agree I would love a final four with him and Raft because Raft is starting to let loose now I've noticed where he he just gets like the John L. Davis uh three attempt yeah. Raft was yeah. disgusted. Oh no, what are they doing? And openly admit it. And it's like if the two of them were ever together in that moment, mm-hmm. like CBS better have a dump button. I just my only fear would be um sometimes the disgusting nature of the basketball is the feature of college basketball. One hundred percent. Uh like Bama Grand Canyon sort of felt that way where like it was so gross that it got to a point where I actually kind of liked it. But not really. It was exactly but, what it, college basketball. Game yeah, was to be. it's just slot like it's 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 it, it's it's literal madness. They're just dribbling off their feet and like can't finish layups and and then uh, a dunk comes out of nowhere. And you know you see like a few minutes of that and you're like, oh my god, this is so bad. But then you see like eight minute stretches of it and you're like, I don't know, maybe maybe this is awesome. I don't really know anymore. It makes uh, you cherishes the made shots. Yeah, exactly. That much more. Exactly. Uh, but no, I I agree with you. SVG is awesome on 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 the call and and Marquette. Um, Shaka's back in the Sweet 16. Uh, that that was one of my between Shaka and Illinois making it to the Sweet 16. I got to find some new facts because Illinois uh, making it to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2005. There goes that fact, which I never, I never really threw out as a hater. I was more stunned by that. Like that's that was that was always something that like I would forget. It's one if we're at the bar and you tell me that. I, yeah. No, no way. You, you like look it up on the phone, like. Oh shit! Yeah, you could right. you could tell me that I would forget it in three weeks, and then you could tell me it again. I'd be like, "What the fuck? They haven't yeah. made it since over." Like, no um, way is that right? They had so many good teams. I was the Shaka one. I remembered well because I used it as the 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 part of me that wanted to ever be a hater, or like just kind of make jokes or whatever. Um, just because I I find it fascinating that Shaka Smart once upon a time was like the guy in college. It was him and Brad Stevens. I know, and he has not been back to the Sweet Sixteen since, and now he's back. Uh and this Marquette team is 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 an unfinished business team, you know. They, I like they, this Marquette team a lot. They, I love Kolek. Like, yeah. Listen, if you're a lefty, you you have my heart almost immediately. Yeah. And if you shit talk like Tyler Tolick, Tyler Kolek does, 
I am in love with that man. He's so it, this was a master class from him uh in terms of just being a, a pure point guard, just running the what happened, Bloodman? I see you laughing over Look at the point. <laughs> look at this kid dribble on the free throws. We got one fifty left. Over in. under implications here, by the way, it's one thirty four and a half. Uh his his, his dribbling on the free throws is okay, cool. Oh, yeah, now sick. they're gonna cover it up. Once <laughs> it was oh just, it five. Yeah, it was very oh. funny. Oh it was, it was just funny. Sorry, that <laughs> caught me off guard. And no, that, that was that was worth an interruption. Thank you. Five five quick dribbles. Squatting from dribbles. Yeah, yeah. squatting. Well, his down other and... hand was like this. Like yeah, it was true. It looked like Stanley Hudson. To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> um, I learned his name, his last name earlier this week. Never forget. Oh, Stanley? Well, yeah. Remember yeah, right. that on Mostly Sports? You know that show? Oh, a yeah. That's right. Ago. Yeah, that. that was a long time You didn't time know ago. Donna from yeah. Parks and Rec either. Uh, you know. Uh, Kolik was a was it was a point guard masterclass of just uh, changing tempo, which, which he's always done his whole career. But just to put that on display of like it, it, as he's playing a guy like KJ Simpson, who is a very good player right. as well, um, and he's outmatched in terms of athleticism. And uh, it's not like it, he's finishing at the rim with right. Dunks. He's not dunking on. He's not Jamal Shedd like no. doing tip dunks, jumping over people, and and the play that, that he, bouncy. And he's just so good at like controlling tempo yeah. and leaning into dudes. And then right when he's getting ready to shoot it, stepping back and throwing up the left handed layups, and they always find a way to go in. It's crazy. The play he had that I think kind of sums up him was was it might have been the eventual game winner. <laughs> it technically like if you go by points or whatever. When he dribbled along the baseline, made a circle yeah. around like, like the Lampkin in Colorado yeah. and then just had that little lefty push. Yeah. And it was just like you can just see the Colorado guys being like, How the fuck do we guard this? Like yeah. he's slower than us. He's less athletic than us. He's finishing over our big guys. Granted, Eddie Lampkin doesn't jump high, but it's like, how do you not yeah, and it's just like that's the guy I want with the ball. My, I, I don't know if Tyler Kolick's the best point guard in the country. Uh, Marquette fans would argue he is, and and I'm certainly in no position to. I don't know if he's the best. The Big East was. Yeah, with how good yeah. there, there are so many good point guards, and I don't I don't mean to make it a, a, a you know a, a a thing where I'm I'm putting out my tier list of point guards, but I will say this: he I know that he is the the one guy, the one point guard in the country that if I was a coach, like a high school coach, I would use his tape from all of my point guards that would come through my program yep. or whatever because his game is uh, again this isn't a slight on him he's just not like a he's not an explosive athlete he's not there's nothing and it's not just cuz he's a white dude it's just like the reality of it like how many times like he's, he's he plays below the rim he never is like really blown by guys he doesn't have a slow first step per se but he's not that's not how he he makes things happen is not with his explosiveness um but he's so freaking good, and he has his game to me is the most replicable because uh, if you can show a kid, like I think back to like when I was, I never was a point guard, but like um, when I was when I was coming up and playing basketball, I always had a, a, a belief that like you got to always just like you know if you're making a move to the basket, go strong, take like take yep. strong dribbles, go finish at the, and Kolik just knows how to. He's like you know you don't have to go full speed at the rim and then at the end like adjust or whatever. He's like, what if I go at this tempo and then slow, pull it back, and then go here? And now I'm leaning into you. Now you're off balance. Now I'm here. Then I'm over here. And like the way he does that, if I was a coach, if I was like coaching like a 15 year old how to play point guard, I would just show him Tyler Cole and be like, dude, do everything this guy does because he's incredible. No matter how athletic you are, if you can do that, you're going to be very, very good. Especially like for me, growing up as a point guard, and I'm I'm not I'm shorter. I playing against guys that are six seven. It's like. I, I'm not finishing at the rim. Yeah. That little runner floater it's crazy. that he's yeah. perfected is like something that, yeah, I was taught, but it, I was also taught in, you know, we graduated high school in 05. That's a yeah. long, it's time, a long ago. time ago. Yeah. To see it now and use that way, you just, A, you don't really see it that much because everything now is based on explosiveness, athleticism, and yeah. whatnot. And he just does it. And I, I, I don't know. I find this Marquette team super likable. I've started to love Shaka Smart because everyone I have too. freaking out on him being on the court, and I'm like, I hope he's – I want him on the court at all times. I don't have I, – I, I agree with you. I don't, for some reason, it doesn't bother me as much. I just as find I, it funny more than anything. I do find it funny, yeah. Like, I don't I don't think it's – I don't think if, if people are fired up about it that they're wrong because um, 
it, it's kind of abs- it is kind of court. absurd. Yeah. But for some reason, it doesn't really bother me. Maybe it's as simple as my team hasn't played him yet, and if my team played him, I'd be like, okay, now fuck this, I'm mad now. Uh, but for some reason, I'm with you. I just think it's like funny, yeah. and and it's and he's always been that way. He's his entire career, he's been the guy like slapping the floor and getting. And I think it's stage. funnier now because he's wearing a long sleeve like yeah, you know. Uh, long sleeve shirt underneath a, a store bought Marquette <laughs> polo, and he's not in a suit and tie. And he's doing it, and it, yeah. it just makes the visual so much better. So I'm glad, I'm happy Marquette's out of that bracket. Like I, I think Colorado would have been awesome to watch. Like Colorado yeah. Houston eventually could have been a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. I'm just full on cheering for. Jamal Shedd versus, versus Tyler Kolek. Now. That's, that would be that would be fantastic. Yeah, this Colorado team ended up being uh, – they had an up-and-down season, obviously. That's why they were in, in the play-in game. But um, they, they were starting to put it together there for a second. They were they were a ton of fun. Lampkin uh, just turns it on in March. Uh, he did that at TCU, too. It's just like that, March comes around and Lampkin's like, all right, now I'll start – That Arizona I'll game. start over. balling out, I, yeah. Um, Tristan Da Silva, I think, is he's awesome. playing his way into being a first-round pick. He's awesome. When they uh, made that run in the second half to start the half, it was yeah. De Silva just. KJ Simpson's obviously awesome, and then you got Cody Williams, who I I you know I have no idea where he's mocked, but uh, and what's his face Headley is like a perfect role yeah. player. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was that was a great game. I I very much enjoyed it, and I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed watching Colorado, uh, last couple of games. Um. What else? Uh. James Madison Duke. I want to talk about this a little bit. Not really the game itself, but more this Duke team because I have. I've been in on Duke's talent. I've been very much out on Duke's demeanor and Duke's approach to the game. Um, I, I've I've become a broken record when I talk about Duke that I, I felt like for most of the season, Duke plays games on the other team's terms, and they're mm-hmm. just happy to just like whatever the game is going to be, that's what we'll – We'll just we'll just follow your lead, right? Opponent. If you want to play inside, well, Filipowski yeah. inside. You want to spread out, well, fine. And they don't they don't really play games on their terms. Uh, tonight was. One, they played it on their terms from the start. Yep. But two, uh, I, I think this is the best that I've seen Duke all season. I don't know if that's crazy, if that's recency bias. Am I overreacting to Duke playing against a 12 seed? Um, but I, I do think this James Madison team was not a fluke. I guess. No. Why would you argue they're a fluke? I just you look at the 12 seed, and you're like maybe the uh, maybe I shouldn't overreact. To they the, uh, they, only, they they played in the sun, but like yeah. whatever. And it's like. But I, I just I mean Duke Duke dominated and yeah. they dominated uh forty minutes. For forty minutes. They were they were setting the tone. James Madison was trying to be physical and Duke wasn't having any of it. And um and suddenly I'm I'm in a position where I'm like, listen, when when the bracket came out, I looked at a potential Houston Duke matchup in the Sweet Sixteen and I thought, Houston is gonna eat them alive if they play each other. Because Duke is soft, Houston is the exact opposite of soft. That's gonna get ugly fast. And and Duke's going to do a lot of whining. They're doing. They're going to do a lot of complaining about the refs, about the physicality, all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't want to re- overreact to one game, but I'm sort of thinking maybe Duke is not going to be that way. I don't know. Like I, I, don't I, know. I, I I'm I just, sort of thinking like Jared McCain. If he plays like this, I, I, you know, is he going to do that again? Is he? Yeah. If Duke brings, if Duke can bring the fight, they can absolutely win a national championship. They just have not brought the fight for for basically the entire season. They don't bring the fight. They bring the talent. But and, here's my counterpoint. I, I get what you're saying, and I can see it. My counterpoint or my counter argument would be uh, Juris Plavsic last year. Right. Who right. <laughs> got in <laughs> Filipowski's head 12 seconds into the game, and Plavsic was perfect for it because he was just the, the goon of Tennessee. Houston, every single player plays like that, but they're yeah. good. Yeah. And – that's if I'm a Duke fan, I'm sitting there. I feel good, but it's like, oh shit! Like Filipowski might cry yeah. in the first half. That's what I thought when the bracket came out. I was like, Filipowski is he's going to start limping by the first media time because you can't spread Houston out, right? It's yeah. not like the traditional big where you're like, okay, we'll just play Filipowski out and let him, yeah, let him hit jumpers and and high ball screen for whatever. You can't do that with Houston, and yeah. I'm curious to see who they put shed on. Like, that's what I, I mean. He has you put to put Chet on McCain, or do you put him it on? Feels Roach like or, McCain right now because McCain is so hot. Um, but you can also uh, just have Sharp. Like Houston's, I, I'm pumped because that guard matchup, the guard matchup in that region is now awesome. It, yeah, Houston is so fun. I, I it, the, the defense tonight. Um, yeah, it's it, it's fun watching other people 
watch Houston for the first day. Like like Jerry bet on uh, A and M, and uh, I I didn't think it was a bad bet. I t- he asked me he's like, what do you think about A and M money line? I was like, I you know Wade Taylor and Boots Radford, you're always gonna have a chance. Like those guys. A and M and A and M has dudes. Like, yeah, they, they have. Dudes. They don't care yeah. about physical play. Yeah, and I mean they they played already this year, uh, which so they're not gonna be stunned by by Houston, and uh, you know they they lost by four. Houston was. Coincidentally, Houston was up big in that one, and then and then A and M came back and uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, I told Jerry, I was like, yeah, they, you know, that's a that's a, if you want to take a swing on a on a lower seated team tonight, like th- that makes a ton of sense. Uh, and then the game starts, and Jerry was just yelling like they're fouling on every play. What the fuck? They're fou-, like, and he's like, he was stunned. It was he was 13, stunned at witnessing like- <laughs> witnessing Houston, and I was like trying not to like twist the night. I I was. I was trying to like help him, but also I understand when you're in those spots as a gambler, you don't really want to hear anybody. But I was just like, no. I was like, Jerry, got to be honest, you better buckle up for 40 minutes of this shit, dude, because this is not going away. Like they they are so good at uh, you you drive to the bucket, you got shed on your hip, you think you got him beat, and then Roberts come and then Robert come yeah. flying in to block the shot, or someone swipes in as you're going up for the layup, and like at the last second the ball goes off your knee and you lose it, or uh, they're just. Just when you when you think you have, for, it's hard to beat them. I'm not just I'm not talking about like winning the game. It's hard to beat them on like, like on the dribble or yeah, yeah yeah. And even when you do, you're you're it's the job's not done. Like no. even when you get no. them, the job's not far from over. Uh, they're they are so tenacious and uh, I don't know. I, I really enjoy this Houston team and I'm fired up about that matchup because because Duke's guards are playing great offensively and and Houston's guards. I do think to beat Houston though you need A and M's type of guards like from A and M. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like you can say however they played. I know Taylor took a ton of shots, but like you need that personality from Radford and Taylor where they embrace physical play. Yeah. And they'll just keep going at him, keep going at him. And just, you know, you know, Buzz at some point was like, it's going to work at some point. Yeah. Just happened to work at like the two and a half minute mark. But that's why I don't know. Like, who, who on that side of the bracket has those type of guards? Like Kolik uh, is it in a different way? That that uh, would it, so like the who is the guards like A and M who will embrace the physical play, not get rattled, or at also, least guys who won't get rattled by Houston's. You know they hedge yeah. every ball screen. They're the only team that still hedges ball screens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ten like Tennessee. If if you're talking like the whole right side of the bracket, Tennessee. Uh, Creighton's as, as guards, far as like I don't physicality, yeah. they'll, they'll be fine with it, Tennessee. But it also, I mean, that's going to be a disgusting game if they play. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think Purdue's guards want any part of that. Uh, I don't know if Creighton's do. I don't think Creighton's do. I don't think Gonzaga's do. Um, but yeah, I mean, Houston, Houston offensively is is way better than they get credit for. Um, but yeah, they can score. Yeah. This isn't. Yeah, that's the. I, I really like this Houston team, but also on a night where uh, all the one seeds, I guess Carolina played last night, but the one seeds look absolutely dominant, and the two yeah. seeds are looking dominant. And uh, first time since 2019 we've had the top eight seeds advance to the Sweet 16. Um, and all of them, seven of them, kind of had no sweat whatsoever. The the twos and the – I mean, Marquette, uh, yeah, Marquette, Colorado Marquette kind of did, yeah. Tennessee, Texas a little bit late. But not. A little bit. Uh, that, that's unfair for me to say. You're right. Yeah, I, can, I don't want to say no sweat. But, Arizona. Uh, and Arizona, not really. A sweat in the like, ha- not r- beginning yeah. of the second yeah. half for a minute. Um, But, yeah, for the most part, it felt like it was dominance from the top seed. So if you're seeing a Houston, a one seed that gets taken to overtime, there is a feeling that they are susceptible. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, there, there there might be something to them not being able to close that game. They're not a great free throw shooting team. Um, there were some weird calls though. There were I don't want to say the refs were it was on A and M side. It was just like so there was, was some just wonky mayhem. calls, yeah. and, it, and it felt like a it felt like someone pushed pushed the March Madness button. It did because you we had more madness. Let's, let's let's push and see what happens. I mean, you had weird turnovers that like typically don't happen from Houston. You had A and M. I swear they didn't know the score, and Buzz yeah. just like hit a button. It was like yeah, just go play wild for two and a half minutes or they they played like that way for two and a half minutes that teams typically play in the last 30 seconds of like a five-point game yeah yeah Houston or A&M just did it two minutes longer and it worked when uh, it's like why didn't you just do that the entire time shout out to my guy Ryan Elvin stepping yeah. up hitting uh, yeah. two free you called it to get, uh I did I said he was gonna I said he was gonna miss the first and make the second ask me how I knew that Blutman 
Ask me you, how I knew that. You were once Ryan Elvin. Yeah, not in a not in a <laughs> second round game though. I think we were up <laughs> by forty against like Central <laughs> Bethesda Baptist. Mm. Good of, school powerhouse. Of, of Northwestern they're known Northwest Nazarene. <laughs> they're known Northwest Nazarene though. Yeah. <laughs> or the uh, Mississippi University, University for University Women. Women. Yeah, yeah. Woman. Uh, um, can but, I throw this out go here ahead. too? Um, when a team like A and M just uh, you know any team whoever generates a comeback like that, where so much of it is coming from late game full court pressure that is just rattling the opposing guards and it's saying that team into a frenzy and they force overtime or you know it's still late in the second half but they're stopping the press now because they have a lead or maybe it's tied and they just want to play things out why why are we not going to continue to pressure them and rattle them and throw them into this blender that they can't get out of why are we giving them a free great pass? question so your your question is when overtime started why did a&m play it straight up why did yeah, go back to yeah. go back to the pressure it was working it, it was these guys were lost it's a great question and it's happen it doesn't happen just once it happens time and time again as i said what seemed like six days ago when you play Purdue, you need to pressure their guards, just full court press them. That's all you have to do, and they can't handle anything. <laughs> so why don't we do that? Why do we only use the full court press for end of game scenario prayers? It's coaches. Like coaches are so goddamn stubborn that they see five minutes on the clock and they're like, nope, gotta wait until the one thirty mark. The, it's like pulling the goalie. It's there's also always incorrect. There's also yeah. It's if you get beat pressing, it looks so much more embarrassing. Yeah. I guess just if you're, open. If dunks. you're if you're aggressive and you're giving up open dunks, um, I think there's that element too, where you're like, I we don't need to be aggressive now because we've now tied the game. Yeah, in a ms in a and M's case, it's gone into overtime. But I, constantly put themselves in the worst spot on the floor and got trapped. I do trapped think Blutman's on to something, though. They should start – instead of – don't commit to it the whole time. Start for the first minute and a half that way. Yeah. yeah show and then if, something. Then if you have the lead, way? it's like, okay, we can pull it back a little bit. That's kind of what Fairleigh Dickinson working. did to Purdue last year. Yeah. I don't remember if they were doing – Oh, weird. Press, but we're they talking were... about Purdue and their guards gang pressured and rattled, <laughs> thrown into a blender. I've never seen this before. And Mark Few's going to do it. Mark Few's going to do it because he actually – he might know ball. <laughs> we, I think you said I've it. I've never seen blood make it. I don't blood make it. This tournament has stunk. Like, I hated it. I don't know if you guys saw – San Diego State just won, by the way, while you guys were podcasting. San Diego State won that game. San Diego State moves on. They won by uh, who's your, who's your 28. Lace, uh, okay, who's your least favorite team to watch in the Sweet 16? Is it uh, Purdue? It's not even close. It's, Purdue? It's, every, it's the worst team I've watched in my entire life. The worst program. <laughs> like I cannot watch them. And then Purdue fans get mad at, at, at me, Tice, and everyone else for speaking our minds and saying, it's ugly brand basketball. I have nothing against Purdue. The yeah. brand of basketball is unwatchable. Like, I don't want to watch uh, a ref show in a free throw contest. We did the free throw contest. It was a tough watch for a little, <laughs> and it was fun. And we're just watching. Like, Zach Eady has one move in his bag. Yeah. And their guards, oh, I hate it. I hate it. It's terrible. And then Leo Borg's going to do the same thing next year, and then we're going to – it's a whole thing. It's what if, a whole crap. What if Eady right. suspended right. for the right, Sweet 16? We're all right. We're all right. It's gonna be okay. I would, I would be happy, but then Purdue's gonna get trounced, and it's gonna be another uncompetitive game. Um, I've already fought this fight with Purdue fans all day today. Uh, I made the mistake. Of, yeah, of you're a doofus for saying. doing that. <laughs> um, I actually like the rest of the team. I don't, I don't even, I don't even dislike Edie in a sense that like I do. I know you do. I don't, I don't hate him. I just like it's. He just he, his highlight reel is. The most boring highlight reel of all time. And, and I hate and that he's the one like, that went back-to-back -back national play of the year. It's like, can he ugh. just be a fun guard? Yeah. And when and when in the second half, when Edie scored two points and Purdue was getting out and running a little bit more and moving the ball, and, and I, I just it, watching watching them dump the ball down to Edie, and then he either gets fouled uh, or, or shoots a baby hook because yeah. that's the only move he has. Um Purdue fans like they they think that I'm saying they should one they shouldn't do that two that the refs are wrong like I don't I'm not saying any of those things I'm just saying from a pure like a watching basketball perspective I watching the Purdue the first half of Purdue Utah State even when it was competitive and they were really like dumping it into Edie a lot 
right after you got done watching Marquette, Colorado, was like the biggest come down ever. Like I know. Marquette, Colorado yeah. was like high level basketball and and no fouls and guys are uh, it, balanced scoring from it was everybody. Guards and, all that. and wings yeah. making play and then. Eddie Lane and then, while, and then Utah State Purdue. I was like, God damn it! Here Watching we go. Alabama Grand Canyon kick the ball around like they were playing on a soccer field, <laughs> infinitely more fun than Purdue ball. Yeah, but I, I like I like I do like Purdue's guards. I think they they've gotten better. And uh, yeah, wait, wait wait till they see full court. <laughs> the Purdue Gonzaga game. I'm I'm very interested. In I was just about watching. to ask you. I'm very very interested in this game because I think Gonzaga. Uh, is going to put Purdue in ten trillion ball screens, as yeah. uh, you know the smart coaches do. The problem, oh, so it was against Presbyterian, two what? and nine Presbyterian foul on Khalid Mutakabur. Mark Tyus missed free throw in the seventy-seven forty-eight yep. game, and yep. then you made yep. a free throw in the seventy. This is the exact same as trying to ice oh, a game in overtime. Well, Shout out to, round of- to brother Lukey. That's the that's the exact uh that's the exact same thing as trying to ice a game in overtime, isn't it? Uh you get fouled, you're 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 going to the line, you're a little nervous, you're a little You're, you're cold. You're cold. cold. You've been watching the game for forty minutes. You shoot the first one, just get a feel, you brick it, and then you're like, All right, I got the next one, then you hit the next one. That's that's why I I, I, I just hope you miss minutes. long. You can't miss short in that. You story. can't miss short, yeah. You can't miss short. Yeah. Um I was gonna ask per, you though, Purdue yeah, Purdue Gonzaga. Is that the is that your most uh, what yeah, game are you most yeah, let's excited talk to about watch? It. Let's then. talk about this. Let's uh, let's power rank the uh, top three for. Oh, God, I'm also looking so, at Brandon's bat bracket. Is, like I know what. Oh yeah, you're yeah. Brandon, Brandon, I just need to see it, and it's like, it? oh, he has Mississippi State winning the title. Um, yeah. So I, I there wasn't a ton of madness. Uh, Bluntman was a little more blunt. Call him Bluntman because of how blunt he was. Thank that you. This, uh, that was funny. That this uh, <laughs> tournament stinks. <laughs> The committee uh, got it all wrong. The committee got it all wrong. Got it wrong. Uh, but it's set up for a fantastic Sweet 16. And, yeah. and it, there were – all right. Get the, you know what? <laughs> Change your attitude or get the fuck out. Yeah. Uh, the Sweet 16 should deliver. The Sweet 16 it is going to be awesome. Because uh, all these games I'm, I'm pretty fired up about. I would say Purdue-Gonzaga, I, what's interesting to me is – Everybody knows when you're when you're going against Purdue's defense, put Edie in ball screens, yep. get him moving side to side, test his lateral agility, which is not great. Don't even test. It. We know it's not great, so just just make him There's use it. evidence of that. Yes, make yeah. him use it, and and that's the the formula. The problem is the personnel that teams have don't really allow them to consistently knock down mid range shots like you need to when he's pulling off when he's not you know come off a ball screen. Edie's like. 10 feet back just hanging out by the rim just pull it and that's hit the shot that's kind of what Nebhard does Nebhard can do yeah. that um they don't have versatile bigs that can step out and shoot and pull Edie away from the basket and I feel like Gonzaga has that too uh now they've already played this year but Gonzaga is kind of a different team Purdue fans would say they're different they've gotten better I feel like Gonzaga's gotten more Gonzaga better. figured way more, more shit out than from then, the last then time Purdue played. has like kind of stayed uh, similar. Been through, been they've been Purdue the last they've been all season. Yeah, yeah, like the last two years really. Uh, so I'm fascinated by that one because uh, on the other side, Graham Ek has foul problems and, and is in foul trouble. He start, he seemingly starts every single game with three fouls, and you're going up against Zach Eady, who's the number one foul drawler. in if Mark college Hughes basketball. didn't believe in sitting him, I don't think Ek makes it to half. Yeah. He might not make That's it to the under twelve. Play. So they're gonna have to they're gonna have to figure stuff out of how they're gonna guard Edie. Obviously, um, you know, just like every other game with Purdue, all both sides of the ball are gonna be dictated by both ends of the court are gonna be dictated by uh, Zach Edie. So I'm fa- I'm more fascinated with that than excited about that. That, that makes sense. sense. That makes sense. I think the game I'm most excited about is Creighton Tennessee. I think. The the uh ten- Tennessee did not shoot the ball well, obviously against Texas, but I and neither I did Creighton like, though. Neither That's did hard. Creighton, and then they ended up like then really they did pouring it in, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I think both of those teams are good enough to win the national championship, and they're meeting in the Sweet Sixteen, and uh, yeah, and it feels like I, I I've been higher on Tennessee for most of the season, but when Creighton lights it up, they are so good. Uh, you have two cold ass white boys with Baylor Shireman and Dalton Connect. Yeah. Steven Ashworth is playing his way into cold ass white boy status. By oh, if he does, that might have to be yeah three overs yeah, just three, on the cold yeah. ass white boys. So uh, I, I think that's my pick. What's yours? I think it's here. Here's a reference point for you. By the way, I just realized you're looking at Brandon Walker. I was figuring it out. Just completely obliterated Brad. I, know. There. I think he has three over there. By the he way, he does. I'm looking at the Mississippi State title one. <laughs> um, because I'm not looking at the other one. Uh, I think it's. 
is it North Carolina, Alabama? That's going to be fun. That might be the highest, like, fun. Yeah. Fun one. That's going to be a lot of fun. I, yeah. It's Houston, Duke. I think. Because yeah. if Houston gets through that, they become, I think, like, the number two team, like, the number two favorite with ease to, to win the title. Yeah. Yeah. It's Houston. I, D- Duke feels like. No disrespect to Marquette. This is going to get thrown back in my face when Marquette does beat Houston. It's today. something about feel, beating. I do feel like Duke is the the best chance to knock off Houston. It's the name on oh, the jersey. Uh, it's, yeah. just, it's if you beat Duke, Kentucky, Carolina, the you know UConn, the five six teams. There's just like that hurdle that you get over. Yeah. Um, Illinois, Iowa State might be my least intriguing game, but the fact that one of those two teams are going to the Elite Eight, yeah, just doesn't sound right. But, but they they're both, two but and they're three both seed. so good, yeah. And they're so different style plays. Yeah. I don't know. I think it, it, Illinois Iowa State is kind of the diet version of Houston Duke, I think. Um which I don't mean to say that those teams are worse. Yeah, but no, it's I see like it. yep. like when I want to see Duke's offense go up against Houston's defense. Um Illinois' offense might be the best in the country right now, and Iowa State's defense is right up there with Houston. So uh What's I'm, your I'm dream fascinated elite? by that. Dream Elite Eight, just from entertainment standpoint. Entertainment standpoint. Entertainment, not not fans. Entertainment only. I'm not talking about... Um, fandom or anything. Fandom. Like that, yeah. I'm not saying, you know, no haterism here. This is just pure entertainment. Uh, I do think it's Purdue versus... Okay, let me just start in the top left. It's Connecticut, obviously. It's it's UConn, Illinois. UConn, Illinois. UConn, Illinois. I think Terrence Shannon and Marcus Damask... That makes versus, it more fun. Versus then. UConn. And I love... I want I want to go to Hilton. No disrespect to Iowa State. I want to go just, to Hilton. You know, offense is a little more Illinois sexy, more so um, I think we want we want Iowa State. But then again, I also might be a hypocrite and pick Houston. So give me a second on this one. Uh, it's Carolina, Arizona, because you want you want to you want Caleb Love. Love, yeah. Versus I just want I don't even want Carolina, Arizona. I want Caleb Love versus R.J. Davis. Yeah, and the two fast girlfriend teams. that that split them right. up. I That's want right. her as the ref. I want her a half court with a split team. as the ref. As the She's got to make the decision. She's the ref. Yeah. We don't even do coin flips in basketball, but I want her flipping the yes. the coin. Ceremonial the game, style. The ceremonial coin. So I think I want UConn, Illinois, Carolina, Arizona. On the right side of the bracket, I, sorry to Iowa State fans because they're going to they're gonna think this is hypocritical, but I do Marquette. want Houston. I just said I don't want – I want offense over defense, but I do think I want Houston Marquette. Yeah. I think I want to see no, Houston like, Marquette. The NC State story is great. The one thing about the Midwest now, I think Purdue being being in the Elite Eight is fantastic theater. I think I think Zach Eady versus Dalton Connect, who are the two best players in college basketball That'd this be, year, yep. is fantastic. They've already played, uh, but you know to 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 do it on this stage. Tennessee's never been to a Final Four. Purdue has not, not been since nineteen eighty. That's an electric story that you can sell to people. But I would like to point out Ryan Nimhard playing against his old team would be juicy as well. Gonzaga Creighton. I really don't care what happens in the Midwest as it turns out. I I think I think Gonzaga winning a national title with this team would be very funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think I do think it's They weren't going to make the tournament before like the Kentucky game. Yeah, I'm slowly talking myself into it being plausible. I'm slowly talking myself into Gonzaga and Duke who I who I felt like are various Down levels of their, good. Yeah throughout the year, but, like, not really serious title contenders. I'm slowly talking myself into them actually being title contenders. How much would a hater have if Gonzaga won a title and they played NC State in the Final Four and, like, San Diego State or Iowa State in the title game? Oh, my God. Yeah, what's the, what's the nightmare Final Four for, uh, like like we had last year where everyone's like, ugh, it's gross. San Diego like, State going back. San Diego State's Clemson. back. Clemson. Clemson. <laughs> NC State. And then – uh, I think Gonzaga. I, honestly, Nightmare Final Four. Purdue. 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 Yeah, it's, <laughs> no, it's Duke. It's Duke. Well, you can't do Duke and NC State. I'm saying it's Duke over NC State. Oh, it's Duke over. That's Duke a nightmare. Because beats... Duke fans then get to the scream that they have. The yeah, because everyone's gonna want DJ there. It's DJ like Burns. Yeah, they would rob us. Of so Burns. it's it's Duke. It's San Diego State. It's Clemson, and then it's who's in the Midwest? What's the? It's Purdue. It's Purdue, Gonzaga, Crane, or Tennessee. I mean, I guess well, for me like personally, it'd be worst. Tennessee, but from an enter- it might yeah. be Purdue. I guess the Gonzaga thing plays too. Because but Purdue, whole, if Purdue goes to the Final Four, well, whether whether you like their style of play or not, that is a story. That's an no, obvious story. That's not really. <laughs> <laughs> that will what turn into if Purdue makes the Final Four, no matter who they play in that game. 
yeah. America is going to turn on Zach Eady yeah. so fast when there's five foul calls in the first yeah. four minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't I – don't, so, all right, let's do it this way. What teams – what teams cannot win the national title from here? Clemson. Clemson. God damn State. it. Clemson. Clemson. They're going to win it all. Clemson. Um, NC State. NC State. I feel like San, San Diego, Diego State's State. the next. Uh, Georgia. Georgia. Ohio State. <laughs> and IT. I mean, he's technically correct. They can't win. Uh, LV. You. <laughs> <laughs> NIT. You Just naming the NIT like, quarterfinals. Who in the Sweet 16? Oh. Wattman, <laughs> who in the Sweet 16 are we crossing off saying, like, that there's they, no they way. can make the Final Four, they can make the championship. Alabama like, can. I, there's right? no way they're going to actually win the national championship. Iowa State. I would say Iowa Al- State. Alabama. Yeah, Iowa State does feel like. There's no way the national champion can come from Ames, Iowa. <laughs> there's just no way. TJ Otzelberger will wrestle anybody who says that. I, I'd win. I'd win. I'd be able to victory lap a lot of old Otzelberger takes if he did win, though. Are you the number one college basketball hater? No. You said you might, you might be. You said you weren't going to talk on the show. And now all of a sudden. And then, and it's then. Like it's number one, up, yeah. Jay Williams. Number two, Plum. Yeah, it's, then, yeah it, is, it is Jay Williams. And then I, I watched that one. kid on Yale, T.O. Rice, shoot the free yeah. free throws. Yeah. And I got fired up. And he just brings Blutman right back. He built something in Fiji. I read his what, Yale bio. I forget what he built. but <laughs> Incredible. I, so uh, I think there's only four teams, right? Uh yeah, I would I would say definitely Clemson. NC State's not winning the national title. No. Although the last team to win five games in five days in a conference tournament was UConn, and they did win the national title. But they're not winning the national championship. <laughs> they might go to the national championship. They might go to if, a Final Four. They're not winning the national. Could championship. they win it if DJ Horn changed his name to something cooler? To, to, yeah, and like, then like, already like had like, yeah, like like but something. I made a point about this recently. You, in order to go on a run. You don't go on a run if it's Kevin Walker and Sean Napier. <laughs> this is a great point. It's Kim Bud You don't become famous if it's Jimmy Fredette. It's great point, Riggs. And so you're saying DJ. So who Moore, doesn't have cool names? That DJ cool. Burns is cool. Though. DJ Burns works. You can't have DJ two Burns DJs. sounds cool. DJ Horn. Your for two some best reason. players can't be DJs. Why does DJ Burns sound cooler than DJ Horn? I think DJ Horn would sound a whole lot cooler if DJ Burns was on the team. Yeah, yeah, right. You're probably right. You're probably if DJ right. Burns was hooping back at Winthrop, or if he was still with Tennessee, like then DJ yeah. Horn would be the coolest guy out there. I think every team in the Midwest can win it. I'm I'm ready to throw Gonzaga in. Uh, every like, team I don't I don't think Gonzaga is likely, but uh, it's obvi- they obviously have a very difficult. Path. If they won it, I yeah. wouldn't be like, oh my god, what a crazy. Huh? You want to take Midwest versus the field? <sighs> no, that's okay. No, because they still have to play Houston and UConn. Like, I know that was that was, yeah. that was a uh, joke. But I I do think Gonzaga. If we look up in Gonzaga's national champion, I'm not going to be stunned i would be surprised yeah certainly. for sure it would be it would be a great run but like they if you say it now not knowing how the final four yeah shakes out yeah <laughs> um, i'd be happy i i like but, i've always liked Gonzaga. i i i hope he wins one yeah I, I i would i would like to see uh mark few get over the hump and then i would also like to see them join a real conference yeah, and I'd be it's happy that he won't. a hater that they, I don't think that like them playing in the WCC is fraudulent or anything. They're very much one of the best programs in the country. I just want uh, this court to end. I just need I well, I just want to watch their games. <laughs> I, yeah, that too. I, I just want to be able to watch and them. And not be like, oh, they play I just don't, Portland. Yeah, oh, sweet. They're tipping off at 1130 right, Eastern against playing Portland. against yeah. Portland. And it's like, over. What the fuck, Port- dude, And it's like, like, all right, maybe I'll, I'll give get it Get them in the Big 12. Maybe it'll be close. By the way, the Big 12, already the best conference in, in the country, although. Arizona coming maybe in. Maybe not. Arizona coming Colorado. in. Colorado coming in. Uh, who else? Uh, Utah. Be, Utah's coming in. And is it Arizona don't State? Don't forget. Arizona State's coming ASU. in. ASU. ASU Woo-hoo. coming Re- in. Gave Bobby Hurley an extension. He's going to be the new coach. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that quickly, and then and then we can wrap this up and get out of here. Um, no women's tournament talk. No, dude, the Buckeyes blew it. I don't. I'm, mm. I'm done with the women's tournament. Um, uh, women's hockey national champion. Women's hockey mm. national champion. Pistols women's, too. Women's yeah. pistol <laughs> national champion. Uh, Kentucky and Louisville coaching searches. You're a Kentucky guy. Yeah. Um, I've, I'm already starting the Kentucky coaching search because I do think the Kentucky the idea of a Kentucky coaching search plays into the the thought of whether you fire Cal. 
uh, because whatever the market looks like, you know, like I, that, that is a fair point is like the people that want to fire a cow. If we fire a cow, who are we going to hire? We need to have an idea of who that guy would be. Um, Dusty May to Louisville was obviously not a done deal, but it felt Everyone like it was a done deal. Uh, and in the 11th hour, Dusty May switches, goes to Michigan. I guess let's start with Louisville. Like what, where, where does Louisville go from here in your estimation? Um, I still, I, I really have no tank. idea. You think it's Jerome Tang? I, I mean, that makes sense, right? Like, I think Tang would kill it there. I know people are split on whether he's corny or not. With, yeah, with how he is, he's but gonna win. That's really it. He if does. He, <laughs> he all that like fan base. Like Kansas State has fallen in love with him. Yeah, and you see, like what Goodman put out the list of names, and it was Sheen, Sheen Holloway. Holloway was surprising to me. I, yeah. Um, uh, Abdul Rahim from South Florida and Pat Kelsey. Pat, Pat Kelsey. Kelsey. K- Kelsey, I get because he's a Cincinnati guy. He's a Mc. Is he? No, he's a. I think he was at Xavier. So I think he's a. He was a Xavier. I think he's a Chris Mack guy, Sean Miller guy. Yeah, he was Xavier. Um, oh nine to eleven. So yeah, mm-hmm. he's relatively from the area. But like, if you're Louisville. Yeah, I. But well, this is. The, I mean, I said this when Ohio State job was open too. That it's it's. The, there seems to be a belief among just fan bases that there are just a ton of like, Jay Wright types that you could just go get. There's one. There, Jay let's Wright. just let's just write a check and go get the big guy. Um, those they're not out there. Like like they're like Jay Wright's not coming back to coaching ever. I'm pretty uh, sure Jay Wright negotiating his deal that he doesn't do announcing for the tournament because he just wants to sit one location. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Back. Yeah, he's he's not he's not coming back ever. But there's also like just not there aren't young up and coming dudes that have have had a run of like ten to twelve years of greatness, and now it's time for the I don't know. There, there's just like a lot of dudes that have coached. We're for grabbing like, guys for two years. There there are a lot of du- guys that have just been coaching for like two or three Plus years, and, like and they've had example. some success. But it's like I don't want to say they're not good, but it's all I'm like ah, oh, there's not enough data, dude. I like, I don't understand well, why we're no all. Well, there's no one at VCU right now. Odom just got there. Yeah, VCU's like you VCU's always always got to throw always, VCU. always hire the guy from VCU. Yeah, um, it's just a weird time for coaches. So I don't know. Yeah, Jerome Tang makes as much sense as anyone else. Otzelberger's going to be a hot name as long as he's still coaching, I guess. Uh, yeah, he, but also like, Otzelberger wins, but he's a tough sell. When you're talking about the Louisville and the Kentuckys of the world, yeah, where you need to win, but there there is no there is no John, hiring John Calipari from Memphis because when Kentucky yeah. job when they fired Billy Gillespie, they're like, we have our guys John, John Calipari. Calipari, and it was the sexiest hire you could possibly make, and everyone was like, there's no, oh shit, this is a perfect marriage of of John Calipari, uh, you know his whole brand and Kentucky's whole brand. Oh my God, this is a home run. That just doesn't exist and for Louisville, for Kentucky, for anyone else. What what I was curious, uh, and maybe we can talk about this with with Dusty May, uh, is Louisville. Louisville is is one of the best jobs, but also is Louisville not a good job? Because like like why would Dusty May not take that job? Why would he? I think Michigan's a great job. I don't mean to say Michigan's not. Um, but my thought is like, is there something to the the moving parts of college sports where the, being the, in the Big being Ten, being in the Big Ten or SEC, those are the only two life rafts, and the Big Twelve kind of, I guess, with basketball. I was going to say with basketball, obviously. but do you want to do you want to join an ACC school? Like, I don't, I don't. Was there something with that? Like, because why would you if Louisville thought it was a done deal? Louisville's like, we got our guy, and and there's no way it, ne- it never crossed Louisville's mind that Dusty May would say no to them. Because and all why would you, you say have to no do to Louisville? at Louisville right now? is win, like, seven games your first year, mm-hmm. not say the word fight after a press conference, right, right. and not have stories like you fought a player, the player randomly is sitting in the stands during games, and a player isn't playing in the first half because he's not wearing Right, fights. right. That's all you got to achieve. That's really all you got to do. You very, could do that. Yeah, very, very easy. Um, Michigan, you, yeah, you don't need a lot after what happened this past year with Juwan. yeah. But they've had way more recent success. Like, as much as we like to make fun of John, he did get a couple sweet 16s. Yeah. They, so they at least have. They got to an Elite Eight, right? In 21, lost to UCLA, I think. E... Right? Did yeah, because UCLA the... was an 11 that year. Uh, so they would have played him in the yeah, Elite they Eight. they played him in the Elite Eight. Are yeah. you, wait, who were you talking about? Michigan? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a terrible game. They scored like 49 points yeah. or something. Yeah. So it's like. The pressure to win at Michigan feels 
which sounds bizarre. Sounds like you have to have it quicker than you do it. Slightly Louisville higher, right yeah, than Louisville. Uh, so as a coach, wouldn't you be like, oh, I can guarantee? But myself. I think I think long like. I, I think you're right with year one, but then I think that's going to flip. Yeah, it very does. Quickly. It does. Yeah. Um, I I'm shocked that he took Michigan. I'm I'm a little I'm I'm shocked in the sense of like Louisville wanted them. So like I I I would have, you know, and it's not even uh, me being a Buckeye and trying to knock down Michigan because I Louisville's a better job than Ohio State as well. Like I yeah, I thought Louisville's a top five six yeah, job in America. Yeah, and I mean some people would argue it's it could be number one given they have so much money. with all the money they have um, so much money this like historical success yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was crazy that he didn't take that job and I'm just trying to like figure out why he's a, he's an Indiana guy too. It was like, Michigan's not far from Indiana, but like he grew up in Southern Indiana. I think that's Louisville the other part literally of Louisville sits on the river. Yeah. So I, I think Louisville thought that too. They're like, he's going to be right back in he's know, home, familiar like, yeah. home and, and all that sort of thing. Um, so that, that part surprised me, but, uh, the fact that Louisville fired Payne so long ago and just still hasn't uh, yeah. hired anybody. I'm 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 very fascinated where they're going to go. I'm fa- do you fire Cal? I think you have to. I think you have to as well. I think it, it's it's I think you worry about it. who you're hiring later. I think you just have to like Yeah, right? Like you're still Kentucky, you should be yeah. able to hire it. I don't, almost whoever you want. I don't see how he can be on the bench to start the season next year. Like I don't I, that is that is going to be I mean and and I I tweeted it to to kind of stir the pot as soon as you guys lost to Oakland. Um but I kind of like as I've had time to think about it. I I I, I think I believe it that that uh, I I can't take Kentucky seriously if John Calipari is back next year. It's bad for the fan base. I I think he I'll think your program is like not a total joke like the way Louisville has been. But like I'm I'm like okay well I, Kentucky is not seriously trying to win an yeah right title. we'll be twenty two yeah. we'll have twenty five wins be a three four seed and everyone's like all right I'm picking against you right exactly it's not gonna be shocked yeah and it's it's gonna be terrible if he's on the bench there already was a civil war this year and last year yeah from um, if you said the word john calipari you had to draw your line on the sand he's our coach he's fire him right away <laughs> now after every loss it doesn't matter when the loss is next year if he's coaching fans yeah. are going to lose their damn minds because it's going to be cal ain't changing it's going to be We'll just get the march. Let's right. See what happens. Let's see what happens. See what happens. We're, but he's, he's out of play. cards to play. He used to be you able to. If, if he fucks something up, he's like, "Look at this recruiting class we have coming." If if the season's not going well, it's like just wait till March. It's, he, he, none of that's going to work on any. He's done anybody he's, anymore. He's rotated assistant coaches. Yeah. In and out. He's he's, he's out of play. Portal. He went all guards. He he's yeah. shooting this year, and it's like. The divorce needs to happen. Yeah, it's like, for for both. For, I don't. Know why I don't know why you'd want to coach anymore. I mean, money obviously to to. Fulfill everyone the contract, knows the married but. couple that you look at and you're like, "There's no shot." Yeah, and then it's like Christmas shows up and you're like, uh, uh, "Do we have to buy you a gift? Yeah. Like, are you sure?" And that's how it feels right now. And I, I don't know. It needs to. It needs to happen, and then you figure it out. And yeah, Kentucky ain't hiring Jay Wright or Brad Stevens. Scott Drew's still the guy, like the the that's the other dream hire. But like Scott Drew just came out a couple of days ago and said, "I'm staying at Baylor." Because I, what I saw, I forget who reported it or wrote the story. Yeah, really. but the, the Scott Drew was apparently a little frustrated about the NIL situation at Baylor, and then he got some reassurances. So then there was an article that came out of before the tournament started that Scott Drew is not interested in the other job. He's going to stay at. Um, Chip and Joanna came through. Yeah, he's going to stay at Baylor because he has reassurances that their NIL is is going to be up to par. And then Kentucky loses to Oakland, and suddenly I'm like, no, wait a second. <laughs> but it's <laughs> like, here's the thing. People keep screaming. If I told you the last three seasons, you get round to 32 losses that Scott Drew's had, yeah, Kentucky no fans yeah, will be no ready kidding. to fire Scott Drew. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, yeah, I mean Scott Drew won a national title not too long ago, but um, I'm sure some – contingent of the fan base is like we're hiring the guy that's lost three straight right and that you know they lost the, the game's today. passed him by yeah yeah so i don't know like yeah i think you make scott drew one of the early also scott drew's defense since uh jerome tang left i know falling off a but it's like who else i've said one name and i got mocked and i will still fight you over it don't fight me you mocked me about it i did yeah okay fight sean me. miller <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think sean miller yeah okay we can fight i think sean miller listen um, let me get this pull up what i from 20 or 2008 to 2023 
two years at Xavier, top 20 in Ken Palm, mm-hmm. Elite Eight, Sweet 16. Goes to Arizona, Elite Eight, second year. Derek Williams should have just taken it to the basket it- instead of settling for a three against UConn. Mm-hmm. Now, unfairly played Wisconsin too many times in a row and lost the Elite Eight. Mm-hmm. And then that this is where it gets, you know, you have the fall, like the downfall as everything is unraveling mm-hmm. around him. Takes Xavier to a Sweet 16 in year one, loses both starters this year, has to play with like no front court. So I'm not holding this year against him. I think he can recruit at major schools like he did at Arizona. I'm not worried about Raleigh Hawkins' situation. It's it's fine. I don't I don't think Sean Miller is a horrendous guy. Like if if you hired Sean if you hire, if you hired Sean Miller, you talk yourself into it and you I I just like It's just who else is like in it's, that it's, range that's, of the that's Sean the, Millers to hire. That's the question. Of of Scott and that's Drew the problem. And, and and Sean Miller, it's I, I'm looking at the teams listed here. Dan Hurley, dream hire, ain't happening. Not happening. Uh, Dutcher's not happening. Dutcher, um, yeah, like Underwood's not happening. Altsberger, we've Andy talked Kennedy, about. like, <laughs> yeah, Go yeah. Find your own guy. Make your own guy a star. But who? His the own guy to the search committee. The Antoine own Walker. guy. Not I, think, I think you Kentucky. have. I think you hire Antoine Walker. I think that's. Yeah. Right. I I'm not helping Kentucky when they sign the guy to a lifetime contract. Now they. Well, that's so that's the other problem. Ridiculous. Mitch yeah, Barnhart. Come on. What, what are we doing? Mitch Barnhart's a terrible AD. <laughs> you have and to I don't. He, he Where's don't, the like, loyalty at Kentucky if we're firing guys who have a lifetime contract? Which ends. In I won't want to go coach there. Which ends in 2029. <laughs> His life ends in 2029. <laughs> Ironically, the year they play at yeah, Indiana. They have to. Yeah, um, that is true. Oh, I didn't even yeah. think about that. They they signed I can't a contract wait. with Indiana. I can't wait for that deal. Yeah, we and, ruled and out. The second we all. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna. That's so funny. The second they side that, everyone's like, "Well, I guess Cal's not gonna be around for." The, Little did they know it. Would Little be did like, they know right be this, now. This There's just no one to hide. Uh, yeah, and that's what terrifies me. Like, I don't get like shirts or Kelsey or something. I really don't care. I just I think you have to identify. You have to identify someone and make a bold play at some point instead of being cowardly and going with the whole recycling coaches thing. It never works out. The teams do. I don't, but. Are you really hiring College of Charleston's coach? I, I mean, oh. you never know. He could be the next great coach. Like you don't, you have to make a play. You have something. to. Like Kentucky's last hires came from Memphis, Texas A and M, Georgia, yeah, the Knicks, yeah, and an assistant coach from Joe B. Hall, and then uh, Eddie Sutton was at Arkansas, I think. I mean, and that's something like I'm more vocal about in in college football. So we'll, we could just use Kelsey for the example or whatever. He's at College of Charleston right now, right? In 10 years, he could be w- like a top five coach at some other high major, and we could be saying Kentucky should have taken the switch. You had your chance, yeah. You could, but I'm uh, not had your terif- chance. You could have identified him earlier is, than anybody I'm else I'm also got terrified there, that he's the guy who cheaper. walked out of UMass job on his press conference. Yeah, I know. I, it, I, he's just like an example. Like, I don't – just any mid major coach, like I don't care who it, is. it doesn't have to be him. It could be Shirts. It could be, it could have been Devries. Like it didn't have to be. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, but it's just I, there's none I feel great about, and I like I like Kelsey a lot. Yeah, I understand. I just wouldn't that. like if that's who you move on from Cal to. It just feels like such a like, yeah. I know, but we're, no, we're living in a different world of of hiring these guys. I mean, the Boston Celtics, the the Los Angeles Lakers, Duke, North Carolina, all. All, all came open and all just hired yeah. like dudes that everyone's like, huh? Yeah, we really missed that, that coaching, sir. I'm, yeah, that like really wasn't that screwed everyone. Yeah, I mean the Celtics hired a th- how old was he? Thirty four, thirty five. Once again, um, Joe Mazzulla is ruining my life. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you would have thought that the you know fifteen years ago the Boston Celtics job opens up and you're like, all right, well, it's, 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 are they going to hire Steve Kerr from the Warriors? Right, you know, are they right. going to hire? And then they're just like, no, we're just going to promote a guy from within, and that's kind of what. That's kind of where we're at with this sort of thing. And Ohio State, like when that job opened up, I had the same thought too. Where it's like, I guess we're going to take a big swing on somebody, and then everybody <laughs> signs extensions, and and then we're just like, actually, we'll just stick with Jake Diebler, which yeah. I, which I'm fired up about. But uh, maybe that's what Kentucky will end up doing is maybe you don't make the home run hire because the home run hire means giving a lifetime contract to a guy that uh, sucks, as it turns it's out. Thomas. Uh, not a, not the, not the most madness we've ever seen in opening uh, four days of of the tournament, but I am fired up uh, for the Sweet Sixteen. I think the Sweet Sixteen has a, has a ton of firepower coming. Moment? And uh, favorite, favorite moment, favorite moment of the first four. 
the the favorite moment. Okay. Um. Okay. Because yeah, it's uh, tough. It's tough. <laughs> Maybe one of the goalkey threes, but I'm trying to think of the, like, Oh, the committee got right. The go- <laughs> goalkey, uh was it hmm. The Creighton Oregon game was so good, but I don't I don't know, like there there wasn't a shot. I mean, honestly, kinda tonight that they, they the ain't hit the three. That 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 baseline out of bounds. I would say that too. Yeah, that was like the if you're talking about one specific shot or one specific play, it's probably that one. Uh yeah, we need more that was a good moment. That was that was definitely that, was that, definitely. that felt like a March Madness. The moment. fact he's like, uh, well, oh, yeah. oh, 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 we need, Colorado, we need more of those. Florida, they hang a car off. Oh, the, the, like, that's forgotten. The Kawhi buzzer beater. That was, I like, just wish it was a buzzer beater. The, for, the fact that there was a second left or yeah. like, under a second, yeah, I was like, no. come on, let it run out. We need the buzzer. In, beater. In, in the the shot that Walter hit to to yeah. tie, it was also yeah. nuts. But that, that was, that's that game's forgotten about. Completely. That was that was a great. I love that Auburn season ended with KD John KD Johnson having to shoot. I know. The game winner. Was that so was perfect. the most poetic. So poetic. <laughs> Katie Johnson doing like a double pump from the three point line is I Bruce Pearl could coach at Auburn for a thousand more years. Katie Johnson. And when I look back on his career at Auburn, Katie Johnson might be the first player I think of. <laughs> Without a doubt. He's, he's like the, he's burning my mind of Without a doubt. Katie Johnson at Auburn. Uh Reeks, thanks for doing this, man. No problem. Um yeah, you're you I always enjoy having you on the show. Uh and uh Wish I could say the same about Bloodman. Uh, oh, you called me a redhead stepchild like five. No, I no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. No, I didn't. Well, I, I used the term redheaded stepchild. Oh, that was directed at me for sure. That yeah, could have been that could have been at anyone in the Could have been at any TJ? That could have been at any of the many redheads we have working at this at They're this company. Numerous. They're numerous. They are numerous. I felt it was directed at me. Damn, I'm sorry. That was a uh... <laughs> <laughs> double thumbs down there. How's your bracket doing, by the way? Oh, no, no. <laughs> end the show. End the show. End the show. No, no. Uh, Florida. I, no. Florida Gators winning the national championship. <laughs> Florida winning it. I thought fun stuff could happen. <laughs> <laughs> and instead, it's just all. We got 29. That's why you're being a hater. Because your bracket's busted. <laughs> My bra- I'm not watching you're any gone. college of basketball next year. I'm going to have the best. That's bracket. why you're a hater. Dude, uh, I thought fun stuff could happen. <laughs> I, I was... uh, thank you to everybody that's been watching. Uh, we're going to go live again next week, every Tuesday. On, on Tuesday, or Tuesday, whew, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, after the games, we'll go live, Sweet 16, Elite 8, uh, once again. Thank you for, for those of you staying up late. I know a lot of you uh, you know, have to work tomorrow. I, we do as well. Uh, but uh, appreciate you staying up watching. Uh, those of you listening, whatever um, – so it's going to be a fun month. It's been so far uh, not the madness we, we've wanted necessarily, but it's setting up for something big uh, next week. So thank you for, for joining the ride thus far. Let's stick with it, and we'll see you next week.